So I've seen a few changes in the marine environment since I was a child, and that's not something to be taken lightly. I'm only 25 years old. A specific example I can give is Pickles Reef. As a young kid, me and my family used to go diving, fishing, snorkeling almost every weekend on this reef. And we would come back with plenty of snapper. We would see a ton of coral, all sorts of life. And over the years, we stopped going. And about five years ago, we went back expecting to see the ecosystem we once saw as children. And me and my cousin dove into the water and just saw gray. All the coral was dead. And it was just something that has stuck with me. So that feeling eventually led me on a path to found real ocean. I was born in Miami, Florida to two wonderful parents. My mother was a swimmer and she and I bonded over our love for the water. She taught me how to swim, dive, and just enjoy the natural beauty of the ocean. I can't talk about my childhood without talking about my father's influence. My father, when I was 11 years old, contracted a condition called ADEM. This condition attacks the myelin sheath in the brain and destroys the nerve connections between brain cells. My dad's case was so severe, it left him bedridden, with no ability to understand language, let alone read and write. The doctors told us he would never be a functioning member of society again. We didn't accept that. He struggled for years, but through thousands of doctor's appointments and countless hours of therapy, today my dad walks, talks, and is relatively independent. He got to this point because he and his family never gave up hope. When I was young, my dad always made it a point to get me out on the water. He would take me fishing and diving, but what he really loved to do was go fast on the boat. Now that the roles are somewhat reversed, I'm trying to share my love for the water with him and the thrill that comes with it. Now, as a society, we can learn something from this situation. In a lot of ways, the ocean is in a similar place that my dad was 13 years ago. The circumstances surrounding my father's illness taught me so much about the world around me. I came to realize that life is fragile, all forms of life, even those that seem the strongest. Life is worth fighting for. But here in Florida, our environment is under threat. There's an increased frequency of algal blooms, some of which are known as harmful algal blooms. Red tides in particular are exacerbated by a combination of warmer average water temperatures and high nutrient loads of nitrogen and phosphorus entering the water. These events frequently cause massive die-offs of marine life. 2021, there have been 957 recorded manatee deaths throughout the state, nearly double the previous record. Aside from harmful algal blooms, many of these deaths are attributed to habitat loss due to human impacts. While manatees depend on seagrass beds for their nourishment, our polluted waterways prevent light from reaching the ocean floor, killing off many of these ecosystems. Globally, hundreds of millions of people depend on coral reefs for food, income, and coastal protection. Yet 75% of our world's reefs are currently under pressure from a variety of threats, including increased global temperatures, overfishing, and disease outbreaks. Close to our home, Stony coral tissue loss disease has ravaged the valuable and once beautiful Florida reef tract. To make matters worse, global plastic production has grown to nearly 400 million metric tons, more than a 20-fold increase from 15 million metric tons in 1964. Moreover, plastic waste directly affects humans. Without the proper infrastructure for discarding waste and recycling, 
Many plastics end up in our ocean where the sun breaks them down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics. The fish eat the plastic and then we eat the fish. It's a vicious cycle that we need to break. We are aware that many of the problems facing the ocean seem unsolvable. Now the question is, what can we do about it? We must maintain hope. Hope comes in the form of people. Now, from a young age, I knew I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to act on the lessons I learned from my dad's illness and create something that mirrored my values as a person. While in grad school, I met my partners and started Real Ocean to offer a way for people to make the tangible positive change for the oceans. While we actively spread positive news about marine conservation and social media, our main focus is to showcase these positive stories through our filmmaking. To stay true to our mission, we donate a portion of our revenue towards mangrove restoration projects abroad with over 12,000 mangroves planted to date. And we aren't alone. Organizations like Mang are restoring the mangroves in Florida that are critical to maintaining a healthy environment. Within the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, NOAA and their partners are working to implement a new approach to restore up to 25% of coral cover. And all across the globe, coral restoration projects are underway, not only to restore the reefs, but also making them more resilient to the changing ocean conditions. To combat overfishing, people are developing new technologies to sustainably farm the ocean in order to meet the growing demand for seafood in the 21st century. Despite plastic production expected to increase by 80% in 30 years, groups all over the world are cleaning up their local environment and educating businesses about zero waste practices to reduce their reliance on single-use plastics. Although the ocean's problems are distributed globally, we must tackle them locally. One country at a time, one city at a time, one person at a time.